What's up and welcome into the 6 best chess opening traps in the other hand's defense, which happens after the first moves pawn to e4 and black goes knight to f6. It's one of the popular opening lines black is trying to counterattack as soon as they can, and from here white goes pawn to e5, knight d5, c4, knight b6, and in this position the main move for white is d4, and after that there is an extensive theory, but the first trap happens after white keep pushing the, his pawns and goes pawn to c5, taking the knight, therefore the knight has to retreat back to d5, from here white goes knight to c3, chasing the knight once again, now let's say black recaptures, you recapture by the pawn, and at this point black may decide to play pawn to d6, because indeed these white central pawns, advanced pawns, pawn on e5 and c5, are restricting black's activity and black may wish to trade them off and get some more free space for his pieces. At this moment white has a really interesting move bishop goes to g5, which looks slightly strange at first, but it, it's got the point and you'll see why white places his bishop right there in a moment. In this position naturally black will either take the e5 pawn or the c5 pawn, but you will proceed the same way in either of these two cases. Let's take a look at d takes e5, which is the best alternative for black, and again, if they take the c pawn instead, you'll do, you know, the same idea, you'll execute the same idea anyway. So let's say pawn takes e5, it's the best option for black, and here you play queen goes to b3. There is one straightforward idea which your opponent will probably notice and while you're moving the queen away you let your rook to stand on d1 on the next move which will attack black's queen and create some unpleasant pressure onto the black's position. This is the first and the most straightforward threat that white has here. In addition to that however white has one more hidden threat which your opponent is very likely to overlook and if black plays virtually any move, let's say knight goes to d7 trying to capture that pawn as well as attack your queen, or again virtually any other move, you just go bishop goes to c4 and all of a sudden there is no way for black to stop bishop from capturing the f7 pawn and the black skin is gonna be checkmated either immediately or within the next few moves. Really interesting finish of this game, and once again, what I really love about this trap is that you get a great position here, regardless of what your opponent plays, okay? And uh, at this point, you can notice why white placed his bishop on g5 in the previous move, because now black can't play the natural move pawn to e6, because in this case, your bishop will grab the opponent's queen. Let me just play these moves. Okay, so e6 is not an option, because you can grab the queen. And if not e6, then there is no way for black to cover his f7 pawn. And the good thing about this trap, once again, if I just uh, take one move back here, is that even if black is aware of the trap, let's say, it's first of all fairly difficult for them to stop you from going bishop c4, because you can play that after, again, virtually any move of black. And secondly, even if black finds the way to save his king from immediate danger, you are still having a very good attacking position, you'll play rook d1, just finish your development, and for the sake of just one little pawn sacrifice, you're getting huge pressure onto black's position, and that is really cool. There we go with the trap number two. Here you play knight to c3 to protect that pawn on e4, black plays pawn to d5, which is something that they play most frequently, then you capture the pawn on d5, black recaptures, you go bishop c4, taking the knight, so the knight goes back, you retreat with the bishop so far, both players are playing more or less natural moves, and in this position black very often plays bishop to g4. And can you find the winning move for white here? Yes, it's bishop takes f7. And I have to confess that once I was trapped like that when I was playing this position as black, and at the time I think I was already a fairly strong player, maybe a feeder master, and uh, so far I trapped so many players myself playing this position as white in exactly this way, and, uh, and just like, like I also see that people keep falling into this trap over and over and over again. And the idea here is that after black recaptures, you just go knight g5, which is check, and also discover the attack to the black's bishop. Therefore, once the king goes somewhere, you recapture the bishop, and along the way you won that f7 pawn, the black's king is very exposed, and you're threatening to checkmate it very soon, and all in all, white gets the winning advantage. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give a like to the video, and let's move on to the trap number 3. 
In this position you still play knight to c3 to protect the pawn, black goes pawn to d5 and here there is one more way for you to trap your opponent. So far we analyzed the line e takes d5 but you can also push your pawn forward uh, pushing your opponent's knight away. Here black will often try to counter blow and play pawn to d4 which is a good way for black to stay active. Now you go knight to e2 and in this position even though it looks like everything is really great for black but in a way he's somewhat in trouble because wherever the knight goes there are some unfavorable consequences. Let's say if black goes knight to d5. This is just bad because you can simply capture the pawn for nothing and yeah, you're just a pawn up. So that's not an option for black. If they retreat back, knight to d7, trying to attack your pawn, then here, instead of capturing the black's pawn right away on d4, you can first of all make the intermediate move pawn to e6 to disrupt the opponent's pawn structure and only after he recaptures, only then you grab back the pawn on d4, but in the meanwhile, you destroyed here the black's pawns uh, the black's development of his king side is also blocked, the king is vulnerable and definitely have here a very strong attacking position. Therefore, going with the black's knight back to d7 is also not that good. Thus, black may decide to jump with their knight to e4. And here you go pawn to c3 to undermine the center, but at the same time you also have here a few hidden ideas which your opponent will probably overlook. First of all, I mean, the initial threat is clear. You want to grab the pawn, right, which is currently attacked two times. In addition to that, the move pawn to c3 enables your queen to potentially go to a4, which will double attack the opponent's king as well as his pieces on the, along the fourth rank, the pawn and the knight there, which can also be useful and in some variations you can just win some material by making that queen to a4 check. Therefore, black really should be careful here, but Again, the first threat is just to the black's pawn on d4 and they're likely to go pawn to c5 just to protect the pawn on d4 and to keep their position in the center strong. And in this position you play pawn to d3 and all of a sudden black realizes that there is no way for the black's knight to go away, the knight is trapped and you are winning. It's worth mentioning that a lot of strong players were trapped this way because the previous black's moves were really natural and nothing seemed like too critical for black. Of course, often the students ask me, okay, Igor, it's all good, but what if black plays something else? What if they don't play pawn to c5? What if they go knight to c6? Or what if they capture the pawn? What should they do in that case? Well, in the particular position, you should recapture by the b pawn, but in general, I gotta tell you that, of course, you cannot hope to trap your opponent every time and sometimes you will be able to trap your opponent sometimes they'll play correct moves and the normal game will go on so you need to, to learn how to find good moves yourself and if you want to learn that skill how strong players find correct moves in virtually any position then you can click the link below the video or on the screen and join the waitlist for our upcoming course the grandmaster's position understanding we will soon open up enrollment for this course and there you can learn the skill and become a strong player yourself. Alright, we have a few more traps to cover. This is trap number four and right here let's see what happens if you push your pawn forward and then you go pawn to d4. In this position the major option for black is pawn to d6 but your opponent may also decide to play pawn to e6 which looks natural as well. Black is keeping their position very solid, very well protected. Now you go knight to f3, knight to c6, pawn to c4. And here black realizes that he's somewhat lacking space and you know normal development of his pieces so they may decide to jump with their bishop to b4 because at the moment you can't play knight c3 like develop the knight to the normal square because and then it will be captured, black is controlling this square two times. And so it looks like they're creating some troubles for you. But you can shock your opponent by playing king to e2. Yes, you're centralizing your king, which is typically not recommended, but in the given position there is no way for black to take advantage of it, and you are taking advantage of the black's misplaced uh, bishop on b4, as well as the knight on d5, which is still in danger. So black needs to move it away, then you keep chasing the knight, and here you go, pawn to a3, and black suddenly realizes that there is no way for black to save their bishop, it is trapped. Uh, the pawn to c5 does not allow it to go backwards to retreat to e7 so it only can go back to a5 but then you keep chasing it with pawn to b4 and now the bishop is trapped and you are winning a piece. There we go with a trap number five, the fifth way to kill your opponent, kill your opponent in a nice way of course during chess game. 
There you go, knight to f3, pawn to d6, and you follow up with bishop c4. The move which may certainly surprise your opponent, because usually white plays pawn to d4, but bishop to c4 also makes sense. And if black goes bishop knight to b6, you can shock your opponent with the sudden sacrifice bishop takes f7, which will be really suitable for blitz and bullet, because the following line is a little bit tricky. If you go here with knight to g5 check, Now black has a few options, well going with the king forward is probably too dangerous, so they'll probably choose between king goes back to e8 or king goes to g8. If black goes to e8, this is the run option, here you can play e6 and totally lock the black's position, and moreover you're threatening to go knight to f7, attacking the black's queen, which is captured right there, as well as the rook. And here white got a winning position, therefore this is the run option for black. The best response which black certainly needs to find, is king to g8. Here we go, queen to f3, trying to deliver somewhat like a scholar's checkmate, queen to f7. The only normal way for black to stop it is to go queen e8, and here you continue pawn to e6. In this position there is a way for black to escape, but they definitely need to find it, because very often they play round moves, they could play for example something like pawn to h6, or maybe knight to c6, in, in a couple games play black played just like that, and here you deliver your main threat, queen goes to f7, and after the exchange you deliver this beautiful checkmate with your pawn. Therefore here black is done. Sometimes black just becomes desperate and they sacrifice their bishop, they take with the bishop on e6, just trying to escape from the checkmate, then you recapture it with, with the knight and you still got a winning position, because um, you know, you're threatening the c7 pawn with attack of the black's queen and rook, uh, the pawn on b7 is also attacked, the king on g8 is weak, all in all you're getting here a strong attacking position. The correct response for black, the only correct response is pawn to g6, and this move actually gives black advantage, because um, let's not forget that white sacrificed their bishop, and here there is no way for you to checkmate your opponent, and that's why I said that this trap will be mostly suitable for blitz and bully, because if black could find the precise defensive moves, then yeah, they are a piece up, and you can still try to pu push your pawn forward, h4, h5, and you know, try to deliver some attack there, but with all the fiercenessness, you know, the black's position is good. All right, we made it all the way to the last opening trap in the other Heinz defense. By the way, the correct pronunciation of the last name of this player, uh, Alexander Alekin, the fourth world chess champion, and this opening is called Alejandro's Defense in honor of this player. And the correct pronunciation of his last name is Alekin, but actually a lot of people mispronounced it also at, back in a day when he was still alive. And reportedly, Alexander even refused to say hello to people who mispronounced his name. <laughs> so it's a little fun fact. But anyway, let's not back down with this stuff and go right into the trap. So there we go with pawn to d4, and sometimes black goes knight to c6. In this position, you still go pawn to c4, black goes knight to b6, and they're ready to undermine your center and start the counterplay. It all looks pretty good for black, but there is a way for you to question black's plan and actually to get a winning position by playing pawn to d5. But the following lines are pretty complicated, therefore it's best if you really know them in advance. I gotta confess that once I played this position as white and I couldn't find the winning continuation and I think I was already a fairly strong player, maybe I was a feeder master at the time, and I tried to calculate the lines but I couldn't find it. So it's better if you are prepared. You go d5, you're sacrificing the pawn, but then you play pawn to c5, taking the knight. The only way for the knight to escape is you go is if it goes to c4. In this position it's important for you to find the right move, because the first impulsive decision is to play pawn at f4, trying to you know attack both of the knights, attack the knight on e5, and if it goes away you capture the knight on c4. And it looks like white's winning, but black has the powerful response pawn to e6, which enables their queen to go out. And for example in the line pawn takes queen to h4, just I'll quickly show you what you should not be doing, and queen to e4, now actually black is winning because they are attacking your king and rook. Therefore pawn f4 is not the right way for white here. The best move is queen to d4. This way you keep attacking both of the black's knights, and that's the whole point of your plan. You sacrifice the pawn, but now the black's knights are vulnerable and you're gonna capture one of them. Here black may try to protect their c4 knight by playing pawn to b5, 
Then you just recapture, you take on Passant, and the knight on c4 is still in danger. Black may try to uh, deflect you from your plan by playing pawn to c5, and the best decision for you here is just to calmly return back to c3 so that you don't get into those complications. Because again, your idea is very simple. You just want to take the knight, you don't want to distract on any other things. And at this position already there is no way for black to stop you from doing so, because the knight is attacked, you're gonna capture it, and if the knight goes back somewhere, let's say, takes the pawn on b6, then you just capture that knight on e5 happily, you're winning a piece and you're getting a winning position. Perhaps black may try to do something else if I take a move back here instead of knight takes b6, maybe they'll try bishop a6 to desperately trying to keep their knights alive, but you can still follow up with in many different ways, uh, maybe pawn to b3 or knight to d2, both moves are pretty good and you're winning the game anyway, you're winning the knight because just too many of the black species are hanging. If you happen to use one of these traps in your own games, let me know in the comments down below how did it go, I'm curious to know. Also, don't forget to click the link below the video or on the screen to join the waitlist for the course The Grandmaster's Positional Understanding. If you ever wanted to advance in chess, become a title player maybe, then this is really the best thing you can do. This course already helped so many people uh, achieve their chess goals and you can join the gang. Click the link below, join the waitlist and once the course is, uh, once the course enrollment is available, you will be the first to not to know. All right, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed these six traps. Let me know in the comments which opening you want me to cover next. Until that time, be well and take care.